Hello and welcome to this um, film which is all about amino acids and this is the last functional group that we need to look at in the year 12 waste course. So hopefully by the end of this film as usual you'll know what an amino acid looks like, you'll be able to explain some of the amino acids physical properties and you'll be able to name some reactions that amino acids take part in and understand what we mean by something called a Zwitter ion. Okay, now the amino acid functional group, when we're identifying it, I suppose you could say it's not one functional group but two. Any molecule that has both an amine functional group and a carboxylic acid functional group is called an amino acid. And there's this funny little notation in organic chemistry which refers to the carbon that's next to a carbonyl carbon as being the alpha carbon. And so the reason that the amino acids that we end up looking at, the naturally occurring amino acids, the reason they're called alpha amino acids is because the amino group, or the amine, is attached to the alpha carbon. This atom here is also uh, important. It's always a hydrogen. And this group here can vary. Okay, But the great thing for us, in the Year 12 Waste Course at least, is that we don't have to worry about naming these things. I've just put a couple of examples here for you. So here the R group is an H, and when that's the case, the molecule is called glycine. Here, you might just be able to see that you've got your alpha carbon here, because it's next to the carboxylic acid carbon. You've got an amino group next to it, and then you've got this group coming off the alpha carbon, actually joining back onto the amino group, and there's your hydrogen in the background. And if I've got that arrangement, it's called proline. But these are kind of old-fashioned names that have been around, well, non, not old-fashioned, but non-systematic non names that we don't need to remember or come up with. Okay, what sort of reactions do amino acids take part in? Well, because they've got an amino group, they're going to act as bases. And because they've got a carboxylic acid group, they're also going to act as acids. So in other words, they've got parts of the molecule that can act as both these things. What's also very important is because they've got an amino group or an amine and a carboxylic acid, remember the way we make an amide is combining those two things. So in actual fact an amino acid can react with itself in a condensation reaction to produce an amide. But again, this is, all these reactions are going to be things that we look at in more depth later on. I'm just going to look quickly at what we mean by a Zwitter ion. Okay, now a Zwitter ion is an ion that has, a, well, it's a molecule that contains a positively charged part and a negatively charged part. Now, notice this is not the same as having partial positive and negative charges like you have in the polar bond, but you have part of the molecule that is actually fully positive. So here, this might have been once upon a time an NH2 group but it's gained an H+, so it's become NH3+. And this might have once been a COOH group, but it's lost its H+, and it's become COO-. Now, if you imagine, that can actually happen within the molecule itself. So the base part of the molecule can react with the acid part of the molecule, and this thing here is now called a Zwitter ion, because it's a molecule that has a positively charged ion part of it, and a negatively charged part. This dotted line here that you can see, this is actually referring to the fact that this, the double bond that you're left with can actually kind of flip between the two, but this is again beyond the scope of the waste course slightly, um, as long as you can draw the molecule as either that or that, so here's the oxygen that lost the hydrogen, or here's the oxygen that lost the hydrogen, there's the carbon atom that's here, there's the alpha carbon, so if I just label the alpha carbon in these molecules, okay, it's got a hydrogen attached to it. This one the, in these two molecules doesn't have the red part coming off it, okay, all right, it's a slightly different molecule, but the point of these two diagrams is just to show that when we draw it with a dotted line, we're just showing that this double bond can exist in either of those two places depending on where we draw the negative charge. You can just choose one of those. Okay. Right. Now, the physical properties of amino acids, we might expect them to behave like amines and like carboxylic acids, but in actual fact, they're even 
more soluble in water than those things, and they've got even higher melting and boiling points. Now, why is that? Well, because by the time they've kind of reacted with themselves, and the H plus has been lost from the acid and given to the amine, or the amino or the amine group, we've now got what is essentially an ionic compound, except it's a covalent compound with, an ion, with a positively charged ion part to it and a negatively charged ion part to it. But the positive ions or the positive ends of these molecules will attract the negative ends. So this is no longer like a dipole-dipole interaction or a hydrogen bond. It's like a, basically a fully-fledged ionic bond between one of these molecules and the next one. So they've got very unusually high melting and boiling points. And also, they are extremely soluble in water because they'll, surround, they'll be surrounded by water molecules which form these things which we've looked at before in the bonding topic, ion-dipole forces. So the oxygens will point towards the positive charges of the amino groups, right? And the hydrogens of water will point to the um, to the negative charges of the carboxylate ions or the what was once a carboxylic acid group. And so these things form very, very strong interactions with water molecules and will be highly soluble. The good news is about amino acids is apart from the condensation reactions, um, which we'll look at in more depth later on, that's really just about it. So hopefully you know what an amino acid functional group looks like. You'll be able to explain an amino acid's physical properties. So why has it got such a high melting and boiling point? And why is it so soluble in water? And you'll know the names of reactions that amino acids take part in um, and understand what we mean by a zwitter ion. Um, so for the last time in this series of films, please make sure if, you've, there's, there's, if there's anything in here that confused you or anything that you'd like to ask about or point out, please feel free to come and let me know or post a comment on YouTube.